Hello everyone, Mike with Spray Jones. Going to get into a very big topic here today, which is, is thermal bridging bad? And we get a lot of people talking about the studs and thermal bridging. And I think it's time to address it for real because there's a lot of really good products on the market to insulate the exterior of a structure. And there's a lot of opinions based on staggered stud wall and T-stud. And it's time to really address it. And in order to do that, we're going to take a look at the facts of what's going on. This is going to be a interesting tutorial on what is thermally going on, not on what products should or shouldn't we be using. Okay, before we get into all of this golden information, I want to say thank you to everybody that has subscribed, checked out the channel, given it a thumbs up. Just a reminder, if you're new here, to check out the playlists. There's a lot of really good information and questions that are answered in videos that you haven't seen yet. Go there to find them easily. All right, on to our question. Is thermal bridging bad? I'm going to shock you with some thermal imaging scans. This is a real scan done on a real house uh, that we spray foamed in 2011. And I went back through my... Uh, reports and took a look at things and there's gonna be a lot of varying opinions here okay like I know we're going to get a lot of people that are going to be very opinionated one way or another but I'm hoping that the information that I'm gonna present here is really going to uh, shed some light on what we're seeing this is an outside scan of a home that was spray foamed walls and roof were done uh, he's just taking an ambient external shot but what I really want to get into is the thermal bridging of studs. So here is the guy doing the report. You can actually see his reflection in the window, the front door. Now, in the beginning of the opening page, he states that it's uh, minus 3 degrees Celsius outside and there's an 11K wind. Notice right away air leakage that we are seeing around the door, uh, door knobs around the frames of the windows. But look at the studs themselves. We're a three inch specification of closed cell foam in the studs. It's a 16 on center home. Two by six is being used. No exterior rigid insulation. It's going to have stucco on the outside. And we're seeing right away the effects of the foam. Notice that the studs are not showing up as predominantly cold like one would think. Here's a more close-up view of an exterior wall. So over here we've got cold showing at the frames where the window triple pane glass is being used. I don't see many homes that aren't triple pane in Canada uh, where we are. We're getting 12 degrees on the glass but we're not getting 12 degrees on the studs. The studs are faring very well uh, comparable to the the surface of the spray foam. We're probably air temperature here, we're probably in excess of um, 16 degrees according to the scale here, maybe even as high as 17. The, the furnace is running inside the house. Interesting that you can see the open web floor joists, how they're faring. So this is the second floor above. This is an open web scissor truss uh, spray foam in between all the electrical wiring that's going through. Here's a double top plate and we're just seeing some anomalies of where the foam is low in a corner. That's why we get these inspections done. But it is very much showing you right away. You would expect these, these studs to be very, very dark in the blue into the purple range. That there's all this heat telegraphing through and conducting through. And it's just not so. You're just not seeing a huge thermal differential. I mean, yes, we're getting a little bit on some sides here and stuff like that. But the overall mass of the lumber is not showing you uh, huge temperature differentials. Okay, here's another shot of a different wall. And the reason that I picked this one is because we got a window header right here. So this window header is not the full value of three inches of closed cell spray foam. We're getting, at best, an inch and a half. My guys are keeping it more like an inch so they don't have to shave everything. Because there's only, there's an LVL laminate veneer lumber is what LVL stands for picking up the weight over the windows right and uh, we've got an inch to maximum inch and a half so let's just call for intensive purposes here we have one inch of spray foam so here we have three inches and here we have one inch 
So this is going to set up the conversation for the next video where we're going to address flash and bat again because people are saying that they want an inch or two of closed cell and then they want to pick up the remaining R value with bat. Now you, just based on this, not going into flash and bat discussion, based on this, how is one inch of spray foam behaving? How is three inches of spray foam closed cell behaving? These are just areas where it's super low or we've got some additional air leakage that has to be addressed. But all in all, you're not seeing crazy anomalies. And to people that have, have said to me, well, I don't know if I want to use spray foam. Look at all the irregularities in depth. It's not even and consistent. And one minute you're an inch over here and the next minute you're three inches over here. Well, you're seeing an inch right here. And you are seeing three inches over here. How much on the, on the thermal scale is it showing? Very, very little. Not enough to get your underwear in a knot. So the spray foam is behaving at an incredibly high value, massively high value. You're not seeing huge temperature differential. You're not seeing a whole bunch of air movement. You're not seeing a bunch of, of thermal conduction that's now affecting convection all around here. You're not seeing it. The thermal scan doesn't lie, folks. Again, another view of a wall. Here's the window here or the door. Here's the air leakage around the door. Very clear. As soon as we've got cold, noticeable cold, instantly we're picking up temperatures. We got a 9.3 degrees Celsius spot. Where the three inches of spray foam is, 16 degrees. You can see the open web trusses faintly ghosting in the uh, for the second level. You can see a different header design here where the spray foam is in it. But again, you're seeing how the caulking is behaving. You're seeing how the spray is behaving. And, and the worst part about it is actually the window and the window frames, which I've advocated for a very long time. I've told people over and over again that the studs on a 2x6 wall are going to behave better than your, your highest grade triple pane energy efficient low E windows. I mean, this is, this is just proof of that right here. Here's the window and how's the window behaving? Uh, compared to the studs. Now, all right, there's not a great big huge temperature differential drive. It's uh, minus three degrees Celsius. So that's only, to my American friends, we're, we're into the high 20s. We're into 26 Fahrenheit, right? 27 Fahrenheit. Let's kick it up a notch and let's go to something that's a whole lot colder. Okay, here we have a new addition. Uh, this was spray foam insulated in 2021. One of our builders built it onto this existing home. And this is a really good example of how well the spray foam works and evaluating studs and timber because we have an enormous amount of lumber and headers because of all of these windows. Outside, this is minus 12 Celsius. So this is 10 degrees Fahrenheit outside. This is a three to four hundred dollar FLIR um, handheld uh, infrared camera. It's not super expensive, but we use it for on-site confirmation of how the spray foam and air leakage is behaving, and it does show us for today's purposes what we need to see. So let's take a look. So what we'll do is we'll take some shots inside. They're just using a 220 volt uh, 30 amp space heater heat inside here and they've so 4,500 watts of heat and we're going to take a look and see just how windows and studs and everything are behaving. Okay I apologize that this is a smaller low resolution image I've zoomed it in the, the, the it's not as clear but okay here is that wall of windows here's the uh, access door and they've shot the temperature going to the access door. It's minus 7 degrees Celsius, right? But you're seeing the inside air temperature. Now, when they came to take the, uh, the thermal images, it was uh, 21 degrees, so room temperature inside. But notice what you are seeing or not seeing already. You can see clearly where something is cold, but where are all the studs and where are all the headers? Where are they? Maybe we should get a picture of what this looks like internally without the thermal image. Okay, so here we go. Uh, this is actually standing in the doorway. Here's the door. Here's the rough openings for the doorknob and deadbolt. So wall of windows, headers, 
with reduced amount of spray foam in them. We're going to say about an inch, maximum inch and a half. This is actually specified out at four inches uh, with the new HFO foam uh, that is in America and in Canada. That's the new blowing agent, Freon blowing agent that they're using for environment, environmental purposes. This header here hasn't even been sprayed, or I don't know if we can zoom in and see, maybe it couldn't have been sprayed due to recess or whatever, but you get the idea how much solid lumber there is here, top and bottom. Uh, you're dealing with an incredible amount of structure. The roof is being sprayed non-vented, the walls are being sprayed, and then there's a crawl space underneath. And we've got quite a bit of heat loss, as you would think, from the actual window itself and then the lack of thickness of foam. So we'll go back to our uh, our thermal image here. Just, I found the image here with that actual door. Uh, so this is what you're seeing. So this is, all, this is exactly at the same angle, right? Header, header, window, studs. Let's go over to the thermal image. Okay, here we are. Uh, header, header, right? Studs, studs and we are not picking up super cold. If they were super cold, like the air coming through the door, we would be seeing blue everywhere. Uh, plate at the bottom. The air temperature has made everything warm. The surface temperature, so everything is warm. That's why we're getting orange everywhere. And even the windows in these situations are performing very well. They're brand spanking new windows. We're not even picking up a whole lot of heat loss around these. Uh, here's proof that it's 21 degrees in there. I don't know if you can see this really easy. It's 940 is the time and it's 21.3 Celsius is the air temperature on their oversprayed little splattered uh, internal temperature reader. So it's showing you the air temperature with one 220 space heater inside. Here's from uh, the outside just showing the windows and the headers. Here's another one. So you're, you're not picking up high emissivity of heat loss. Remember, it's, it's 21 inside there, and it's minus 12 Celsius outside, and you're not, you're not picking up huge heat loss. You're seeing where the solid pieces are, but it's not showing up glowing heat on the outside of the structure. Now let's move this one. This is shooting up towards the roof. 21 degrees of air temperature up towards the roof. So these will be roof. Here's the top windows here. Again, you are not picking up. Here's the corner, corner wall. Picking up a little bit more blue and a lot more blue of the actual window itself. This is at, at the junction where the glass is going to be. But again, we're not picking up blue, blue. Here's header. Here's lumber here. We're not picking up great big blue strips everywhere where we have studs. Again, outside shot. Um, this, this is what you get when you're dealing with a, a $350 camera versus a $10,000 camera. You do get what you pay for. But again, not showing great big huge amounts of heat emitting from inside the structure at 21 degrees. Just to show if you would, this is standing outside. Here's that door, right? Here's the air temperature inside. He's already picked up 13 degrees where the camera is shooting. But again, you're not picking up heat loss through the studs to the outside. Here's the door for comparison's sake. So if you were getting massive amount of heat transfer uh, through the actual thermal bridging of the studs and through the windows, you'd be picking up a lot more emissivity right now as you see here. Then again, back to the reverse uh, inside the structure seeing the studs, seeing the hot air temperature and what have you. So I think this is proving already that the the lumber is not having a huge effect on the structure like we think. Okay, here we have an interior shot. Drywall has just been dropped off. This is a 2010 built home. Uh, the drywall is still cold. You can see here 2010. It is going to be about 15, 16 inside. You can see three inches of foam here. Uh, in the walls it says here three inches and it is minus 30 degrees Celsius outside which is minus 22 Fahrenheit and that is really cold so it's going to give us a good view of exactly how well the spray foam is going to be working in the walls. 
What you are seeing here is the furnace is on and pumping hot air inside the house. This has been scanned with a ten or twelve thousand dollar camera. This was a professional scan that we paid for and in this situation you can see the drywall sitting here. This is the scaffolding and they've got seven degrees Celsius, seven degrees above freezing where the drywall is because the drywall is a lot of mass, cold mass sitting here. But again, 14.5 degrees on uh, the surface of the spray foam, three inches away it is minus 30 and we're seeing how the windows are behaving and we're seeing how the studs are behaving and, and solid lumber. You're getting a little bit of open web truss. You can barely make out the faintness of the open web truss here. Window of the kitchen and new home under construction. So it's showing you just how well the spray foam is working at minus 30 outside and how well the studs are performing. So I think what you need to quantify here is you are now seeing that 90% BTU retention from the chart that I've shown in multiple videos on how much spray foam do I need. That four inches is 92, uh, three inches is 90, two inches is 86. You're seeing what 90% BTU retention looks like. And, you know, again, there's headers over these windows that aren't going to be full, right? They're not going to be a full value. They're going to be at least an inch and a half less maybe even as much as two inches less than what you're seeing normally in the walls. So this really ends the debate, in my opinion, as to whether you need extremely thick values of spray foam in order to be warm. Do you need five and six and seven inches? Do you need to be into these R50 regions when you know that R30 spray foam is going to perform well? Do you need to be putting on... Um, exterior grade insulation zip wall or or rigid styrofoam and then putting the full value plus extra on the inside well i'm going to say no to that if you've stayed this far in the video i'm going to say that you don't have to now you might want to and i would build my house differently today than i did uh when i did it in 2012 and i'd use a lot more products that are available i'm not saying that r rigid insulation on the outside is wrong but I just want you to see the facts of what are you really offsetting? How cold is it really going to get? And you need to run the costing on what it's going to cost to put that rigid on. What's the return on investment? What's the payback going to be? What are we actually eliminating? Me personally, I think I would. If I was to build all over again, I think I would use an exterior rigid insulation and then I'd couple it with probably the same three inches of closed cell on the inside. But I don't think that I would go to super high values. Uh, I think that they are diminishing return and it sounds great and looks great on paper, but it's not actually providing real world uh, proof. And I've got a video uh, that I'm gonna show you here at the end of the roof of my house where I got four inches of closed cell spray foam on the roof deck at minus uh, 37 degrees outside, minus 28 on the deck only four inches of spray foam holding it back and you can see how warm and well it's performing so we're going to just close and check that out okay let's see it is currently minus 28 celsius it was minus 34 this morning but it's currently minus 28 and we have four inches of closed cell spray foam. And let's see with the laser gun. Let's see the foam. On the spray foam inside is 18.3 degrees Celsius. Four inches of spray foam, 18.3. Now, a common comment is the cords. Like, we don't have four inches of foam on the cords. So let's see what the cord is. I'll point it onto the cord. 17.9 on the cord. 17.5 on the cord. Let's go right up to the crux. 18 degrees in the middle of the spray foam. 17. So the cord makes no real big difference. It's not a huge heat loss 
Uh, and it's not detrimental.